What is up everybody? We have another interstate or freeway uh, incident here. This is gonna be a very close call and it's gonna be a really good example of why you need to have proper line of sight. So we're gonna go ahead and keep moving forward a little bit here, but you see people starting to apply the brakes, but we can't see around this van. And then boom, they start applying the brakes and we barely miss them. So this is why we need to have good line of sight and a good space cushion and realize our brake power. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into this spot. So right here, you can see all the vehicles up ahead in front of this van. Now, one thing that you can do, and it's hard for you guys to see here, but I'm pretty sure when you're riding, you've done it before. If you don't have good line of sight, another little tip and trick here is to look through the back window, through the windshield to the vehicles in front of them. That's a little thing that I like to do sometimes, especially if uh, I cannot get a good view. But line of sight, what that means is, is that you can see around the vehicle. So right here, we have great line of sight. We can see way down here. So this is lane position one in the right lane. Uh, there's lane position one, two, and three in this lane. So this is actually a very good position for this lane. But we're gonna move over to this part to this lane because this is where the whole incident happens and now we're in lane position two behind a van so we can't see around uh, the van to the left we can't see around the van to the right we can't see anything past this van that's the line of sight thing i want you guys to focus on so when it comes to lane position okay so we need to worry about uh, line of sight so we can see around we need to worry about uh, lane positioning so that we can protect our lane so vehicles don't want to come in and possibly share the lane and we also want to present ourselves and so right now any vehicles in front of this van or even uh, next to the van cannot see us very well because the van is blocking so if there's a, an intersection for instance this van will be blocking the view of the person you're wanting to merge in front of us so positioning yourself for uh, better visibility for other drivers is very important another thing we want to watch out for when it comes to which position we're going to be in is where are our escape paths are they easy to get to if i'm not paying attention will i just automatically happen to have my escape path uh, situated with me so there's a bunch of different things that are are in the lane positioning uh, arena i guess uh, so what we want to do for the main thing though is we want to have good vision for ourselves because if we can't see the hazard we can't evaluate the hazard and we can't execute any type of evasive maneuvers so for me personally i want my vision to be perfect if they don't see me um, or they don't see me very well, that's okay That as long as I get to see them and see what type of things they're doing. So for me personally, I would be over in lane position three, possibly close to the line. And if that's not good for me, like if I go over there and I'm like, ah, it feels a little weird. My skate paths are starting to get compromised. I feel like the van doesn't see me very well. I would move over to lane position one so I can see around the left side of the van and still have the shoulder to escape. And if I absolutely had to, I would swerve way over to the right and get into the right lane if I had to. So uh, my big thing here is I'll be moving back and forth. And if I do move back and forth, I'm gonna make sure it's in a, a very fluid motion, very quick motion too. So as you can tell, you cannot see anything in front of this vehicle. You cannot see if the vehicles in front of this van is applying the brakes. You can't tell if anybody's merging into this lane. You do not know until last second. So another thing you can do, instead of just switching over to lane position one or three, you can actually just increase the space cushion. So go ahead and decelerate, roll off the throttle so that the van travels further. You are slowing down, so you're going further back. And then you can see around uh, the vehicle a little bit easier. And if for any reason this vehicle is gonna apply the brakes really hard, you have that space cushion. So there's many options that you have. And just realize that you know if you have this big space cushion, somebody might merge and go into your lane in front of you uh, and then behind this van, that's perfectly fine. Go ahead and decrease again. Keep decreasing if you don't feel comfortable switching from one to three, three to two, one to three, whatever it is. You, the best thing you could possibly do is just have a space cushion around you. So in front, side to side, and behind you is the best bet. So we're gonna move forward just a little bit here. And as you can tell, the van moved over to the left. So like I said, if I was in lane position one and I wanted to see around the left side of the van, um, I would be doing that, but then this van switched over to this side. It's like, well, then I can't see, so I'm gonna switch over to the right side in lane position three. So that's the type of thing that you wanna keep doing, you know, just based off of how everybody's doing things. Um, once again, escape paths would be to the shoulder or even lane filtering. So we have people applying the brakes here. Why is he applying the brakes? We don't know. I, there's, I can see that there's nothing in front of him, but why, why, why? I don't get it. I don't understand. So as soon as I see brake lights, it gives me a good clue of, uh-oh, something's happening. 
And I don't like to have that feeling, but when I do have that feeling, it's a good trigger to me to be like, okay, okay, we're gonna go ahead and relax. I, I'm gonna start making decisions now. I might have to react to something, you know, so I'm gonna go ahead and be hyper vigilant about something going on right now. So we're gonna move forward just a little bit more. And then now he's starting to apply his breaks. And I talked about this in my live stream. So if you guys wanna see my live streams and ask questions and, and have a good discussion, please do so. Join the live streams. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell button because that does help. And then you'll be notified when I do these live streams. But uh, what I was trying to say is that people can apply maybe 5% brake pressure, brake lights pop on. People can apply 80% brake pressure, same exact lights pop on. You don't know how much brake pressure they are doing. You don't know if they're slamming the brakes. You can't tell. So what you need to do is as soon as you see any brake pressure, get ready. Now it could be, like I said, 5% brake pressure or it could be 90% brake pressure, but get ready. So he's applying brake pressure, then boom, he's applying a lot more. So this van was actually going to swerve to the right. So you're gonna see him uh, apply brake pressure and he's like, oh no, I can't stop. I'm probably gonna have to turn into the next lane, but this uh, Volkswagen right here was blocking him. He did probably did a head check and checked his mirrors. Like, ah, I can't do it, I gotta slam these brakes. Hopefully nobody behind me hits me. Thankfully, the motorcyclist didn't do that. So you're going to see him try to swerve to the right a little bit. Then he can't because of that van. And you, now you see the vehicle in front of him. You can see a shadow and a shadow and a shadow. That's letting you know how many vehicles are in front of him. They are all stopped. So now the motorcyclist did a great job by applying progressive brake pressure. Remember, at this high rate of speed, you still got like a long ways to stop. You know, your total stopping distance is huge. You got your reaction time to the moment you figure out you have to stop. The moment you apply brakes and then the moment you stop, those are the that's the equation for total stopping distance. And the total stopping distance at this speed is going to be very far. So even with very good brake pressure and progressive braking, you know, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 brake pressure, even at that quickly, you're not going to stop very fast. You know, you're not going to you're going to travel quite a bit. So this is why having that space cushion and an escape route is actually really good in this situation. So he's going to apply the brake pressure and he was going to also uh, probably try to swerve in this situation. You, know, you start getting closer and closer and closer. So your natural instinct is to turn the handlebars and try to get out of the way. Thankfully, he was able to hold it upright because I know a lot of people will just slam those front brakes and dump the bike. If you want to learn how to apply proper brake pressure, I do have a video on ddfmcrew.com. Make sure you check that out. Very good resource. I have a bunch of other exercises you can do in a parking lot and it's amazing. I think you guys should try it and check it out. So good job, man. Good, good, good job for not dumping the bike. Now, what you can do to, to possibly prevent a little bit of this panic is to get yourself better line of sight, okay? Think of an orange in your hand. Go ahead and grab an orange if you have one, whatever. I want you to grab it and squeeze slowly to get that juice out. You don't just yank it and smash it, right? Same thing with the brakes. Pull it in slowly, Gr squeeze it slowly. Five, four, three, two, one. Five, four, three, two, one. Five, 